Hello and welcome to Inside the VI, I'm your host, Tally Campbell. For the past 11 episodes, I've had the great pleasure of being your host and producer of this show. I've got to meet great players, fans, coaches, and even some parents along the way. It brings me great sadness, though, to note that tonight is my final show as your host. We're venturing on to new opportunities for myself as a host of BCHL show and a new political talk show. Our familiar face, Aaron Schultz, will take over temporarily as we rebrand and relaunch in the new year. However, nonetheless, the show does go on tonight, and so on tonight's show, we will speak to alumni Dane Gibson. We've got to discuss the panel and much more. Lost one in the trade business. This is Inside the VI. And yes, walking inside the VI alongside Masman Aaron Schultz. Proud to get those guys, though, we have some news to talk about in the VI JHL. The Oceanside Generals have re- uh, added former captain Travis Fluke to their roster. Campbell restores Nathan Brown has been put on the injury reserve list for three to four weeks with a lower body injury. And in some trades now, Campbell restore traded Christian Braun to the West Shore Wolves. The Campbell restore reacquired Trent Johnson from the New Hampshire Junior Monarchs of the Eastern Hockey League. The Campbell restore have traded James Severs to the West Shore Wolves. The West Shore Wolves have traded Kyle Richter to the Creston of the KIJHL. The West Shore Wolves have traded Brett Laveau to the Victoria Cougars. The Campbell restore have acquired new goaltender Drew Stuve. The Port Moody Panthers have acquired 997-born goaltender Kyle Chima from the Camber Storm in exchange for future considerations, and the Camber Storm have acquired Dane Elfiki. So, gentlemen, with all those trades happening in the VI JHL roster moves, just you know, kind of the December deadline-ish. What are your thoughts in, in generalized sense, Madison? Well, you know, there's a lot of moves going on, but for me, the one that shocked me the most was Kyle Richter the move, getting moved from the West Shore Wolves. Now, on paper, it doesn't seem like there's that much that you know, would make him want to move because this is last year, Junior B, you know, so I'm starting to think it might be something more than on the ice, which saddens me because, you know, I like to see the fifth years, you know, really stay there and commit. But, yeah, that's the biggest one that has shocked me. For me, anyways, you know, it's kind of the whole sense of everything. You look at the Campbell Restorm, you know, they did a lot of trades, Lee Stone up there. Uh, Kyle Richter, though, I'm with you, Madison, that's one of the biggest ones. He goes from a really great to the West Shore Wolves. He's played Junior B in the VIHL his whole career to the KI. And like you said, a little interesting because it wasn't like the, the, the team he went to, Creston, is that much better. Because really they're not. You know, I think they're actually a little bit worse in stats-wise than the West Shore Wolves. Um, looking at roster moves, though, you know, Oceanside Journal's Riyadh, Travis Fluke. He was a captain last year. He tried out the main camp, didn't look that great, was out of shape. He's played one game so far, has no points, but it's a great presence, veteran presence for the Oceanside Generals. So I think, in, in essence, great sense by all teams that the, the uh, moves they've made so far on the ice. Aaron? The teams that's impressed me is so far this trade deadline has been the West Wolves. They got two big name 20 point scores from the Campbell River Storm. They got Jay James Severs from Campbell River. They've got Christian Brandt too. Two 20 and point scores. interrupt you quickly. Yeah, uh, interesting note. Prior to that trade, uh, James Severs actually got a team suspension. Not a league suspension according to the VIH website. Team suspension, so that would have came from the Campbell River Storm. It's probably manager Lee Stone. Not sure to do anything with the trade, but it was team suspension prior to the trade. Keep going. Yep. He was t- suspended by the Campbell River Storm the day before the trade, so that sounds a little bit iffy, but so far, West Shore, they are gearing up for Victoria. It's like they can predict they're going to play Victoria in the South Division final. They are going to get ready. they got two 20-point scores. They are going to go out on full head, and the Campbell River Storm, I'm kind of shocked that they would trade both those two 20-point scores, and even recently, they've had two overtime losses within the division to the Oceanside Generals and to the Comox Valley Glacier Kings. It kind of wonders me why they trade those two 20-point players, but good pickup for West Shore. They're going to go for it this year. Yeah, before you ask your second question, Brian Passmore, of course, the new coach of West Shore, he likes his players a certain way, and my feeling may be that the players like Kyle Richter didn't really fit his criteria, and that's why he got rid of them and he brought in uh, Christian and James Sivers. Mm-hmm. Now, second question, speaking of the Campbell River Storm, they have traded both those guys and made some other moves so far at this trade deadline, and that's made some of us wonder, what the heck are they doing? And so far recently, they've had the overtime losses to Comox Valley, to Oceanside, who is the worst team in the league, in my opinion. Do you think these players being gone has anything to affect with this record so far? You know, you talk about that. There are recent two losses. Uh, they won today against Comox, a very close game. Uh, some new goaltending change up there. You wonder sometimes when a team is great, why are we switching things? But obviously in the, in the, in the mind of, of head coach, general manager Lee Stone, who's a fantastic coach, general manager, something's not right. So do I credit the two losses to the changes? Potentially, yes. You know, but it's going to take that team some time to regroup and see who's there. Uh, in my mind, the additions that they've got and the ones they got rid of, it's going to make that team a stronger team as a whole. Absolutely. So the trades, they may have impacted those two losses, but I don't think it's going to be moving forward, no. 
I think it's impacted him so far. It may be fixed as the season goes down the road, but it's hard. Those are two 20-point players they got in Brandt and Severs that have been traded. And we're not just talking about on-ice production. When you get rid of those players in the dressing room, it's a two personalities, two good players with feelings. They are gone now. They're not just robots who can play hockey. They're actually real people. And so on the ice, they're going to be missed with their production, but even maybe backstage behind the scenes in the dressing room, they could be missing their personality. But at the same time, them. that could be the reason why they're traded. They could have been, as people call, cancer on a team. That could be the reason why they're traded. We have no idea why Lee Stone trade them. That could be the reason why. It could be the reason why. It could be good. It could be bad. Only what it assumes, I guess, we have to assume it's been bad right now if uh, James Severs have been giving us a team suspension the day before he's traded. But, of course, you never know. And it couldn't just be the entire player. Like, not every team member could hate one player, so it could be some who are just feeling a little bit heartbroken that their friends are gone, so I don't know, it's just a weird situation, and it's two good players with personalities that are gone, and the on-ice production, so that might be a little bit tough for them at the beginning. Yeah, you know, for me, it's the goaltending uh, switch is what shocked me the most, because you look at the record, they're 19-3-1, and, and then all of a sudden, they go to two losses, and then they trade their goalie, Kyle Chima. Now... That looks a little funny to me, but it could be, uh, like you said before, they maybe they didn't buy into the program. And once you don't buy into a program, the coach doesn't like you, and you also don't produce as well because, you know, if you don't buy into it, then after a while, it just uh, totally goes to crap. All right, thank you, gentlemen, alongside Mass Boot, Aaron Schultz. Uh, at the end of the show, these two gentlemen will rejoin me back for a goodbye for myself. But for now, gentlemen, thank you very much, and we're heading now things to scores in the VIJHL. And starting things off on Wednesday, November 26, Saanich Braves beat the Oceanside General 6-1 in Saanich. On Thursday, two games on tap. The West Shore Rules beat the Peninsula Panthers 7-3 at the Q Center. And the Victoria Cougars beat the Niall Buccaneers 6-3. On Friday, in overtime, two overtimes rather, Victoria Cougars beat the Saanich Braves 4-3. And the Comox Valley Glacier Kings beat the Peninsula Panthers 4-3 also in overtime. On Saturday, November 29th, the Canberra River Storm lost to Comox Valley Glacier Kings 2-1 in overtime. The Nana Buccaneers beat the Carrier Park Islanders 6-5, and the West Shore Wolves beat the Oceanside Generals 6-5 in overtime at Oceanside Place. And one game on tap for Sunday, November 30th, finally, the Canberra River Storm beat the Comox Valley Glacier Kings 3-2. That's on score this week in the VIJHL. We're now passing things again over to Christian Munz Micklin, who's got our Alumni of the Week this week, featuring Peninsula Panthers alumni and current Victoria Grizzlies forward, Dane Gibson. Christopher? Thanks a lot, Tally. Yes, that's right. I'm joined on the line by Dane Gibson. And uh, Dane, first question for you. What did you learn during your career playing for the VIJHL and the Peninsula Panthers? Just as a person, I think moving from like midget to uh, junior is a pretty big impact. You know, just like playing with older guys four years older than you, especially when you're a young 16-year-old. So, um, yeah, just bonding with with a group of guys it's just yeah um and getting along with them you know you just learn a lot about yourself really um the game wise um you learn a lot of like systems you know you just getting better as a player especially from like midget you don't really talk about systems as much but uh now, of course, Dane, you're now playing in the BCHL for the Victoria Grizzlies. Uh, speak a little bit about what the differences are between Junior B and Junior A hockey. I notice a lot is uh, speed, the speed of the game and uh, the size. And I think Junior B is a group of players who, you know, older, older players in the league, they do care, but just not as much compared to Junior A, you know. So I guess effort-wise, Junior A is just a lot. Everyone's buying in and everyone's working every single night, every single day. Dane, what are some of your fondest memories from your time playing in the VIJHL? Uh, yeah, one was, uh, I was 16. We got, we, uh, we won the, uh, the uh, provincials and the league, or we didn't win the league, but we won the playoffs and moved on to provincials and ended up winning that. And we went to uh, Westerns as well. So that was a good experience, especially as a rookie in the league. Yeah. Another one was uh, playing with my brother on, on the same team. He's uh, two years older than me. So that was great. Awesome. And finally, Dane, uh, where do you hope that your uh, hockey career will take you? Um, I'm hoping to, uh, move on to uh, college and uh, hopefully pro hockey, you know, develop those four years, get to go to school. And I think that'd be a big, big jump and a big experience. 
Thanks a lot, Dane. That's Dane Gibson, former player for the Peninsula Panthers and VIJHL alumni. We're going to now pass things back to Tally Campbell, who's got our Spotlight Player of the Week. This week's feature player is on number 33, Alex Olsen, brought to you by the Queens. Alex Olsen plays the Peninsula Panthers in net in 11 games. His record is 4 wins, 6 losses. He hails from Langley Birch Company and is a 1996-born player. Last, he played those in the general before getting injured. This week's feature player is number 33 of the Peninsula Panthers, Alex Olsen. Feature player brought to you by the Queens, the place to go for live music in Nanaimo. Visit thequeens.ca for more information. Well, that does it for this show, and welcome back, gentlemen. We're done. Well, sorry, I'm done. Yeah, no, we're not, not, not done. you guys are done. <laughs> we're still done. But I'm done. Yeah. And I totally have to say, thank you so much for being our host for these past 11 weeks. You've really brought the VIJHL, given the exposure that they have not had in the past, and I think we've done a really good job here. We're going to miss you on the camera, and we're going to be grateful you're still going to be here off the camera as a producer, but good luck to you in your future endeavors, and thank you so much for being a host, and thanks for trusting me for being a temporary host right now. It's going to be hard to fill your <laughs> shoes, but I will definitely try my best. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I've only been here for about four or five weeks. I was sick that one week, but yeah, it was it was a good time. You know, I really got to learn more about this league and how great it is, and it's unfortunate the way you had to, you had to slowly go because I don't like seeing harassment like that. But you know, nevertheless, it was fun and I enjoyed it. And thank you very much. Well, gentlemen, I thank you very much, and it's been a great pleasure of having you guys on this discussion with the panel. You know, your insights uh, has been great. I know viewers have been liking it as well. You know, I got a big thank you to you two gentlemen, a big thank you to our parent company Island Online, our our editor and, and cameraman Christopher Munz Micklin. It's been fun. You know, uh, junior hockey, I love junior hockey, I love junior sports, I think that's where players excel, and as like Aaron said, you know, the only goal that I stepped in here to do this as a volunteer basis was to give coverage to lead. Not so much lead, but the players, you know, that's why we're all here, I believe so, so a big thank you to everybody who's on our staff, who volunteers their time to come out, uh, to all of our sponsors who've been here, uh, it gives me sadness, I love being in front of the camera, but as I said, my new adventures will continue beyond that way, so... Again, big thank you to everybody. Uh, continue to keep following the show at Inside the VI on Twitter. And uh, next week, your host, Aaron Schultz, will be here alongside the discussion with panel Mass Moon and newcomer Dean Fisher. Have yourself a fantastic night. We won't see you next week. Sorry, I won't see you next week. These guys will. Take care. <laughs>